Greetings from the front of State Hall. Today we're going to talk about emerald green arborvita, or Thuja, T-H-U-J-A, Placata, P-L-I-C-A-T-A, -A, cultivar, single, single quotations, emerald green. When we look at the leaves of this plant, it's very, it's the scale-like foliage, so we're not going to select our leaf arrangement, leaf form, or leaf margin. But I did want to show you an up close and personal look at the foliage. So this is the top side of the foliage. This is the, the underside of the foliage. And one thing that you're going to look for is there is a little bit of a, it's called a, a resin gland. And when we look at these together in person, I should be able to point them out to you. But there is a little, a little bump in the foliage that is that resin gland. So we will, you can see some right at the tip of my thumb if you see those little lumps in the scale-like foliage, okay? So this one is actually considered a shrub. It's a conifer and evergreen. Height is considered large, definitely over six feet. Form is naturally pyramidal. This plant is not so picky about soil, but it does require even moisture. And it's been observed that in Thuja placata that um, if, if they experience drought, it can actually stunt their growth. For pruning info, none is really required. You can see these have a really tight, dense, um, natural form. Growth rate is considered average. Exposure to light is sun, climactic hardiness zones, four to eight. Looking at these, the ideal landscape use varies. So I could see these at the right house used as a corner foundation. I've observed these in people's landscapes in a grouping, a hedge, screen, topiary, or even used in container gardens. The flowers are considered insignificant the fruit is considered insignificant. These don't have autumn color, and I'm unsure if it can really show up in this video, but they do have some bronzing in winter. So from a distance, these do not give the impression of being a solid deep green. They give you the impression of being kind of a rusty green. And today is February the 13th, so we're definitely in that winter coloration. Leaf texture is considered medium to fine fine, excuse me. No notable bark characteristics. I do have another notable cultivar and that's Green Giant. Green Giant is a tree. It's excellent for screening. It's more adaptable to the southern climate, tolerates our heat and humidity well. It's a good replacement for Leyland Cypress. For pests and diseases, this plant does suffer from bagworms and from heart rot. It is not a North Carolina native, but it is a U.S. native. This is native to um, the west coast of the United States. Not invasive. I found no reference to salt tolerance. As I mentioned, this tolerates our heat and humidity very well here in the south. This can be easily trimmed into topiary forms. Most often you see this in spirals or corkscrews. On average, this plant is only gonna be three to four feet wide by about 15 feet tall. So incredibly narrow. So spacing is gonna be important to understand if you're actually trying to use these as a screen. I did look in Dur um, under the general heading of Thuja Placata. Um, this cultivar is actually not listed in your Dur textbook. I wound up um, consulting the Monrovia website and got some more information there. So these are located, as I said, at the front of Steed Hall, and then there's also a grouping in the front left of the Ball Visitor Center. Thanks.